my slides will be on my website. The videos, most of them won't be. Right? The videos just take up too much space. So don't necessarily concentrate on the words that, that I've written. Concentrate on the videos so the words make sense. Um, JimMomentum.com is my website. If after I get back home and get a chance, I'll put these up on, in a PDF right on the website. It will be under the tab that says Speakers. And you'll be able to find these movies. Anything that I find particularly interesting, there may be a YouTube link to. But for the most part, it will just be the words. So I just put a couple of good bar routines on here. This is developing release moves. According to her passport, it says she's 28 years old. <laughs> She warmed up the, I, I don't know the real name, the, the Chimash hat, and missed it twice. And so the coach said, no, okay, we'll just send the bomb and do something else. Um, so who I am, uh, my name's Tony. I own a couple of clubs in New Hampshire. I was the former Region 6 Elite Chairman. I was the Zone Chairman. I have Jim Momentum. I've done national team camps and robotic consulting in this last year. I no longer coach my nines and tens. Um, kind of had this experience where I came home and I could hardly recognize my own children. And I decided I could no longer really keep that level up and still be a good dad. And dad time runs out quick. And so I decided I was going to concentrate on coaching my level threes and fours. And then my brain got really bored with level threes and fours and fives. So I started. I, I, Started doing a lot more lectures. I must have said something smart because they didn't ask me to do this, or I'm just got at the bottom of the um, I've been traveling. I, I've learned a lot this last spring. I've basically been on the road since April. Um, I've been to five different countries and a countless amount of states. I've been home for 10 days since April 27th. Um, yeah. I go home tomorrow night. My kids are older now, so my son doesn't want me to come home because that means I have to get my car back. <laughs> my rules for bar release moves. It takes time, so you need to set the base early and be patient. I think patience is that difficult thing. But remember, there is you can't cheat time. From the time you introduce a release move, until the time the, the kid really owns it, it's probably going to take 18 months. That's reality. But it's going to take you 18 months to get that release move. So be patient. Make sure the base skill is good to great. So if you have a uh, Takacha, the base skill is a giant. So they need to, you need to make sure that's a good to great skill. Is it the right skill for the right kid? Biggest mistake I see coaches make is they pick uh, Jaeger. I don't know why this tends to be around Jaeger. They pick Jaeger because it's an easier skill for them to spot. And the kid is a really crafty front tumble. That's not the right. I, 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 I've seen it 80 times in, in the last year. And they're like, oh, you know, well, I'm working with Jaeger on this kid. So they're carrying this kid through Jaeger, carrying this kid through Jaeger. I'm like, okay, it looks like it. I get the kid on the floor, and the, the kid is, is just a motor moron. And there's just body parts flinging everywhere. So like, this is not the right skill for this kid. Teach them how to fall. They're going to miss the bar. They're going to teach them how to fall. That has to be part of the learning process. Um, people that did gymnastics as kids, like uh, the Kachev or Adult Chev or Jay or something. All right. Okay. The scariest part was the end. Holy shit, what do I do if I miss? Okay. My coach never really taught me how to miss, and I missed a lot. So I had to teach myself how to fall. But I've learned that if I make sure I teach the kids how to fall, that's part of the teaching process, 
they're more comfortable with it because they're being, because by the time they catch, they're going to have to have missed a thousand. And I'm not making up that number. Really, they're probably going to miss a thousand. So make sure that they know what it's like to miss. Strengthen the parts of your body that are needed. And I always tell this to the kids. If you're not close enough to hit your feet, you're not close enough to catch the ball. So they have to figure out how to roll their hips, lift their hips, reach their hands further to catch. If you can't hit your feet, you can't catch the ball. Be creative. Not everything is going to work with every kid. Kids are different. A little faster shoulder, a little more grip strength, a little faster heel drop. You're going to have to be creative in that. Teach them how to catch anything. Are there people that were playing frisbee on all the ages? Cool. Alright, and this is what happened. At my gym, okay, I had this kid, and she was just doing a bail. She said, that's not, not the hardest or least, but she would always like catch in her hands and bounce off the bar and her feet would hit the floor. It's like six weeks. Probably not that long. It seemed like that long. This is where I wasn't patient. Just, she just wasn't physically catching the bar. So I took a floor bar, and And I threw it at her. Okay? She missed the bar, hit her in the shins. Okay? <laughs> I have to call her mom and say, well, you're going to need to pick up Tanya's boot practice. You know, she hurt her leg, and she really can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how, how did she hurt her leg? How, you know, you think a floor bar. <laughs> how, how did she hit her leg with a floor bar? She threw it at her. <laughs> okay? Some of your kids may not know how to catch. Seriously. If you want them to catch a bar, can they catch a ball? Can they catch a frisbee? I would say for half the people here, the answer is no. So teach them how to catch. We do, now I'm up an hour north of Boston. So when we can get outside for our running drills in the summer, we can. We do. We get outside and we sprint back and forth in front of my building and around the side of my building. While they're waiting for their turn, they're throwing a nerf ball and throwing so it's just part of it. Kids just think it's fun. It's better than them just standing in line. And they don't know. They're learning how to catch. So teach the kids how to catch and don't throw floor bars in the field. <laughs> Two lessons. Strength issues. Core strength is crucial, obviously. Start with big muscles and move to smaller muscles. Um, a note on conditioning. You want to strengthen movements, not Muscles. Everything is about movement. It's about strengthening a movement. Don't just worry about a muscle group that they have to be strong in the movement. Take your regular conditioning exercises and relate it to specific skills. Explain to the kids why they're doing certain exercises. They'll be more motivated to do those exercises. Let's take a B seat up on the floor. You know, they lie on their back and they do B ups. That's great. Okay? And none of the kids like them. And they cheat and they arch their back. And do all these other things, but if you say, sweetheart, you need to do it this way, so when you've got like a level five, so when you're doing your like your toe shoot up to the high bar, you pick up up to the high bar, you have the strength to sit up, so I want you to reach up and pass like you're trying to catch the bar, now all of a sudden this kid's actually working their skills, now all of a sudden she's like, oh, I understand what this is for, explain to them why they're doing it, work rehab exercises, most release moves really stress the body. Group of kids that I have on bars. First thing they do when they come in, they take the TheraBand, they either throw it over the bar or they throw it around the, the stall bars on the wall. They do 25 circles back, 25 circles front, then we do um, rotator cuff in, rotator cuff out, both arms, okay, and either 10 and either 10. And that's their first thing. Bars, when they're catching, releasing, all this, it really stresses the muscles, it really stresses the joint. You have to be strong in those joints. Balance flexibility. Okay. I see, uh, and this is a, an older slide. There was a time when I saw coaches really, really, really cranky, trying to get their kids to be super, super flexible in certain areas. Um, the code no longer really cares about that. Take your strong kid, make him fast, and be happy with him. If you have enough flexibility to hit a 180 degree split and squeeze, then your arms can go straight over your head. 
Make sure the muscles are strong, then make it fast. Teach the muscle what the skill feels like. So you're working muscle memory. First slow, then fast. I lectured this last weekend with uh, Gina from up in Chicago. I'm going to throw a number at you, and I don't have the research to back it up, but she said she's going to sign that it takes a 1,000 times to do a movement for that muscle memory to come into play, right? for, that, for that muscle to really have the memory. And she was going to send me an email with it, but it, 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 it seems like it's a realistic number, that 1,000 times for a certain thing. So make it strong, make it fast. Then you have to teach it what it feels like. This is what the muscles going, are going to have to use in this skill. Right? Teach it with this, slow first, then you speed it up. So many coaches, I think, you go into the fast too soon, and that's where we start missing the important body shape. If the kids can't hold it slow, they're not going to be able to do it fast. Handstand. Every release move starts and or ends in a handstand. If your kid doesn't know what a handstand feels like on, on a bar, then they're never going to hit it. Here's my favorite handstand drill for little kids. It's way too easy, <laughs> but this is what they do. She's just holding herself there. She's going to roll over to her back. What I like, you can stop right here. Never do it. What I like about this is with a mat like this, her head is relatively weak. In a tiny bit more, but you don't see her ears. So you would say that that's a fairly good neutral head position. She's just lying flat on here. I don't have to worry about her body being straight. Guess what? Her body is straight. So that's a good little exercise for your little kids. You can line them all up. Take your eight-inch mat. What's good about doing it up against the mirrors is that I just tell her, look at your own eyes. So when she's lying on her back, looking at her own eyes into the mirror, her head is essentially where I want it to be. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Pretty cool little drill. And then just move handstands on the floor. So that's good. She's just doing very handstands on the floor. Now handstands on a floor bar. This is a pretty amazing kid doing a handstand on a floor bar. She can hold it for as long as I told her to. Hold it. And I'll call it pirouette. She heard me. <laughs> um, that, that's like, like the one for one. That's just for certain people, probably 25 or 26 years old. But I'm probably never going to get another handstand like that. I mean, she just always could do that. And you know what she never asked me? Was I in handstand? Right? How many times do kids do a fail? Was I in handstand? She never asked me. She knew where handstand was. She knew what it felt like. And so she was there. So always practice your handstand. This is my bar plan. This is how we work through it. We do overshoots or pack. Okay? My fall back and the straddle back, if I have some you can call kid, I haven't caught a straddle back in 10 years. Alright? So we always learn an overshoot or a pack. At the same time, we're trying to work in that toe shoot, work the staller shoot. Okay? I like to teach it to be in the inside, not outside. <laughs> Everyone after that learns a reverse hack. Everyone learns a Takasha in my gym. They may not compete it, but they all do it. They all learn it. Then they work another release. Dagger, finger, delta. This is where it has to be a little bit more personalized, whether you've got the nice big floaty flyaway, or you've got the, uh, somebody that's an exceptional front tumbler, has a really strong front giant. Then we'll work more of an in bar release, in bar, in bar, uh, Maloney, Ray, etc. So this is my bar plan. When they're level sevens, okay, sixes and sevens are, are working here, these two. Okay. When they're sevens moving to eight, they're learning here, and then move and then moving up from there. As a general note, your kids, I'm going to throw a question out there to be an audience participation. Your gymnasts are never going to, or are not going to learn a new skill after a certain age. What age do you think that is? 13. You must have heard my lecture before. Yeah. But at, at, after 13 years old, you're not going.
going to introduce a new skill and have a kid accomplish it. You are just out of time. If it takes 18 months to learn a new skill, it doesn't matter what then. From, so I'm talking like they've never done this skill before, never done a drill for them. It's going to take 18 months. And if, you, if they've never been introduced, at 13, you introduce this skill. Okay. So that means they're like 14 and a half, almost 15 years old by the time they have this skill. How long is it going to take you from having that skill before you put it in a routine? Another year. Another six months. So now, they're done with their J.O. career. Many college coaches already come in and looked at them. So you need to have these, you need to start doing it. I'm not saying take a nine-year-old and throw her over the bar and touch her. I'm just saying, maybe you want to do back extension roll sit-up and have her understand what it is. So it won't be introduced. So that's my plan. Any questions on my plan? Or on why? I'm not all that smart. So yes. Yes. Yeah, and I'll screw up those levels too because they're still new in my brain between six up. But they might do, and I'll have some of my overshoot and pack salto drills that they'll do on a low bar, and then I can just use it as a side station, and you'll see that. But I'll have them start with those because it's safe and it's fun for them. But always start on, on floor, low bars, that kind of stuff. Okay? So your base skills are obvious. Your back giant. And back flyaway, front giant, front flyaway, clear hip, toe hand, um, if you need to, a straddle, a uh, back uprise for a straddle back. Okay, I don't, like I said, I'm not a big advocate of straddle backs. Um, and a toe front discount. I think the last one is the one a lot of coaches forget. I had one kid who threw toe front in the last 20 million years. Okay? But the toe front discount has the same sit up action that a kid's going to need on uh, the Kachev and on the Jaeger. It's that same setup. So if you think about it, where they release the bar and they have to sit up and flip forwards, it's the same where they have to release the bar and go over the bar and sit up, or release the bar and sit up in the Jaeger. So our release move workout, they go over the pit, they do giant flyaway frontwards, giant flyaway backwards, and then they'll do a toe front discount. That's our release move. So starting with the overshoot, starting with the first thing, correct with this. They need to giant towards the low bar. If they don't swing, if they can't giant towards the low bar, I know they're not swinging. So I want them to giant towards the low bar. Then they need to be able to do swing half turns in a row. I like their swing half turns to be in the same direction as their blind chain. I teach it to handstand. I'll teach all overshoots to handstand. Every kid, are they going to, the first one they compete, is it going to be in handstand? No. But it doesn't mean I, I don't want to start it here and hope it grows. I want to start it here and accept it low. So I teach it to handstand. With your release moves, never, never paint yourself into a corner with their, with your gymnastics routines. Um, let, so we're going to take the overshoot. My plan for the overshoot Kid learns an overshoot, they're just going to kind of jump off the board on the dismount side. So this is their first year competing this routine. Jump off the board on the dismount side, hip cast, overshoot. Right? Then they're going to have to go giant to overshoot. Then we go, now we start back on the low bar side, and they're going to hip cast half turn away to overshoot. The reason I want to make sure that they can still do this is because I'm going to have a kid at region hip cast handstand and make this perfect handstand and not go over the bar. And so what do I tell the kid to come down? No. So you're going to swing down, do kind of like a blind, and then come back and overshoot the other direction. Okay? Yeah. We missed the tenth in bonus, but that's it. We didn't do ball. We didn't take three tenths for them extra <coughs> swing. Might have had another tenth in form. So give your routine, give your kids routines that have a way out. Uh, a couple, couple years ago, like five years ago, Ten years ago, um, at national team camp, Kenny was talking about, you know, this is Molly and all these kids. 
and they've just swung such amazing bars. So we asked, like, what what is your bar plan? How do you do? How do you make them so good at bars? And he goes, I do not let them fall. Like, Thanks. I, I don't necessarily know if that helps. They're not allowed to come down off the bar. If they're supposed to go kiss cast handstand and fall over, they go kiss cast handstand half turn away. Do something back the other way. If you think about what the machines are at Wobie, you can totally see that. So think about how good your gymnasts would be if they had an out in their routine, if they didn't fall. Their confidence fall. So I don't let them fall. Couple videos. Doing that over the pit, but I also like it on the regular bar. So. I'm going to skip this. This is just giant, giant scores of bar. We all know how to do giant scores of bar. Then we'll go half pirouette to swing half pirouette. So she's starting to know how to go half pirouette, swing up to her opening. Any questions on that? I'm skipping these because I know we're going to run out of time. Right. This is a really great drill on pump starts in the back of the shop. Just a second. Um, so we took the ball table trainer, tumble track, and um, we have two eight-inch mats. So you have to think you're already about halfway through with this. She, we, we'll start this just on their back, just going just flat to their back on, on a regular mat. Here's what I ask the kids to do. She's just going to jump and land on her back. This kid is already doing a quarter turn. But if they just jump forward and land on their back, flat on the mat, a, a quarter gainer. And then if you're a lefty, I always make off the bar, get off the mat on the left side. If you're a righty, I always make them get off on the right hand side. So they're already understanding. I'm going to go up, and my body turns this way. Go up, and my body turns that way. With an overshoot, it is only a quarter twist. If you do a half twist in the air, by the time you catch the low bar, you're past half, and that's why you see legs apart. Judges, if, if you, that's why you'll see this, this leg apart thing. You can tell a kid all you want to squeeze her legs together, and it can't happen. She let her legs come apart to stop her from twisting. Okay? So if you go swing up and do a quarter, by the time they get to the low bar, it'll finish in half. Only a quarter turn. So on this drill, she's already done. Jump to her back, lay it flat on her back, roll to one side. Jump to her back, roll to the other side. So Courtney's probably, if I remember with what video this is, she's going to jump up and land on her side. Righty, I think, but she'll already quarter turn. You can kind of see how that's an overshoot. I'll show that one more time. Not, not the greatest, but it's a, it's a realistic drill. Quarter turn. Everybody get that? And now what I do is I add another wedge mat on top of there. So I increase the angle. That's really what I'm looking for in an overshoot. What what's so great about that drill? Yeah, spot. Okay. They, they can do that. So if you think Spotted. And is that a pretty darn good position for an overshoot? Yeah. It's not a foolproof station. She's bending your knees a, lot, a little bit because she's not able to get a big enough bounce off the tumble track. It's a good start. Here's my next drill that I use. And these are drills that I do with my fives and sixes. To, um, what, what's your name? Lubita. 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 All right. So Lubita. These are drills that I do with my fives and sixes. But obviously starting low with like just one mat. And we do this next drill with almost everybody, but without the wedge mat. Again, because it's easy. Just rolling out on a barrel and turn. So the compulsory kids wouldn't have the wedge mat. They would just have a small barrel. And then we add one wedge mat and then 
to any questions on that? Again, it's something. Can you show it again? Sure. Just roll uphill on the barrel. And then she's going to like a one arm and then the other arm. And that's what you want on your machine. So again, laying the base for these skills early on. This is just really good. I always consider the overshoot a little bit like the studs. And kids need to turn their toes in order to get themselves to swing. So put them up on parallel bars and you go up. So swing. Obviously, I'm just, I was just filming this. She has the worst overshoot in the world. <laughs> She's really dumb. Uh, but when I do this, we'll stack mats next to it. It was just, I needed, to, we do the drill, I just needed the video. Okay. Uh, same drill, different, different thing. Double track. Other drills that I do, obviously overshoot the stack mats on the dismount side. Overshoot, then you go to a trapezoid on the dismount side. Overshoot over low bar, and I put covered. I don't like to cover the bar on overshoots. I, because I want the kids to be able to grab onto something. And if there's a sting mat over it, and they're just smacking their hands, I think they're missing a crucial part, and that makes them more nervous. So as soon as I can, we go overshoot and then spot it. Any questions on overshoots? Yes, sir. And it's kind of a hot topic question, and I know I have my way of doing it, but uh, I've, asked, I've asked other coaches this before, but do you teach a, like a hollow in, or do you teach a tap? Because This I, was like, we got in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I teach, I, I, the, the, what's your name? Nick. Yeah, the question Nick asked, do I have them really come back and tap at the low bar for this, or is it more of a glide swing, you know, where they're holding that shape? What I find is that their feet, I, I call it release, so it's a small tap. If you think of where you put the vaulting board, if they're going to jump off the board to grab the bar, they're going to kick the tap, and as they come down, when their feet point to that board, they release. So it, it is a small tap because it, it's easier for them to get their feet up if their feet first went back. And I find that, it, I found just with me, and this is a personal preference, that if I have to just try to pull that hollow, right, that that's where I end up getting more than a half. You know, and, and they, turn, they turn too much, and it, and it tends to be very flat, that they can't hold that shape to invert enough. Isabel, who was the one I had at the whole team, would never tap, and so it kind of can, I, I believed it, she proved my point, but it could just be different body shapes. Yes? I just tell them release because it really is just, they're coming down, they have to be tight if they come to the And when their feet point to essentially where the board is that they jumped off of, they just kind of release and open up. It just kind of opens and then comes through. They're not tapping like they're doing a the They're not tapping like that. But I do want the feet to move it back a little bit. <laughs> Or at least down, bottom, bottom swing a little bit. That could have a definite impact. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Tony says, all right, moving on. Pack salt them. Okay? Prerequisites is what's good for them. They need to be able to giant towards the bar. This kid needs to have a controlled flyaway. Right? Your kid that does a pinny flyaway is probably not the right kid for them. Okay? They could be better for shorter gymnasts. And it needs to be a discipline gymnast. By discipline, I mean, I've had kids that can overshoot, that as they get into high school, can miss, you know, they've got something Thursday night, so they leave early. Friday, they're not there. Saturday, something happens, and they leave early. Monday, they can still do their early shoot. Okay? I just find that the kid that is doing that and is a pack salto kid, on Monday, their, their pack sucks. You know, and if I just think that, has to be a more disciplined athlete that's there. Your margin for error is a little bit smaller, so that kid has to be a kid that's showing up for practice. So my favorite drill, and it starts in the same place as the other one, you just go up, and she reaches back. Obviously, starting low, higher, higher, higher. 
It's a great drill. Again, you're not spotting it. So it's a pretty solid little drill. The next one is just for the reach back. And again, I use the term release because in the packs also they have to come. And when I use the term release, I'm not talking about releasing the bar as much as because she's already let go, but she has to be in this hollow. But then she has to release from this hollow to reach back for the bar. So you can do this next drill on a pommel horse, or we just do a parallel bar for it. So she holds the hollow, and then she releases back. Um, we were actually using this, and I'll show it tomorrow, I think. This is actually a drill I use for your chancos as well, for the reach back in your chancos. But it was just like, yeah, this would work on a pack also too. And the hollow, and you release back to catch the bar. Because the hard part on a flyaway for, for your pack also is you want your feet to stay behind. You don't, you don't want it to rotate over. That's the same as what you want on your tempo. That you want the feet, the back hands to stay behind. You don't want them to stay behind. So we do that. Um, I think I, I don't even know what I want. I don't even know what you're looking for. How does that? She goes from a clear down. I try to put things in combination. I couldn't cut this out, this is like a whole new piece. But this is a nice a nice pad. I don't know how this works on here. You see how it catches close to handstand and the feet stay behind. Um, but she comes up and she had a very small margin of error that she was comfortable with. If her hands weren't perfect on the bar, if she really wasn't catching it almost in handstand, she would drop down. And this was this was one after. And she would drop down. I said, I'll go. You know, let's not just go. I don't I don't feel I have control. So we did some drills where I raised her feet and put her on the floor and had her do some shoulder shrugs and push it. And you know, when you catch the bar, you have you can have control. You catch the bar, and the first thing I want you to do is push through your shoulder. Feel that control so you don't see that where they swing down and their feet smack the floor. You know, because they catch and they're loose, so they hit the bottom and their feet hit the floor. She comes down and does this pack shoulder, hits her hands on the bar, and pops off the bar like it's in your chinko tower. Bam! It just puts it right on her back. I'm like, what did you do? She goes, I forgot to catch. She pushed through her shoulders, but forgot to catch. Don't think it works. Other drills? Similar to the overshoot, but with no turn. This is one of my favorite drills because a lot of kids can do it. Seat drop, so back hands for a non trampoline. Okay, which teaches them, and we'll try to go seat drop back hands for your hands. So it teaches them to leave their feet behind so they're not rotating too fast. And drop those This obviously is a layout quarter, not layout three quarter. Okay, so layout quarter to their stomach on trampoline. Again, drills just learning how to. Similar drill to what the girl did there um, off the parallel bar, only now I've just given her something to hold on to on the side and just drop it and, and reach back. The same on the little worded thing. Oh, that's a little more. Not back there. Wrong video. Uh, I think this is seat drop back in. I'm obviously getting too close to the trampoline. Let's go. Questions on pack saltos? None? Yes? I think the head needs to stay really neutral when they release. I, I tell them I never want to see their ears. Okay? If they start looking with their head this way too soon, they get too much rotation, and that's when they're going to catch and their feet are going to hit on the floor. So I, I would, why would kids? So I, I want them to kind of hold their, their, their hollow shape and their head in, and then when they release, their head and their hands should follow each other. Their head is going to lead the way, but if their head, if they're peeking coming off the bar, I know they're going to hit their. I just know they're going to hit their feet. Okay. Still 
tokens, they just get to play with these shapes. Um, moving on to the reverse hex concept, what I like about it, it doesn't turn. Okay? Like you can do this, you can do this away from the bar, you can do it towards the bar. Right? It's not a full flip. Like Pachet is not a full flip. A Jaeger, you actually have to flip more than full before you can catch the bar. Pachet is not a full flip. It probably has the largest margin for error. As you pass over the bar, I mean, we've all seen kids that have caught like between their legs and kids that have caught like just with their fingers. That's a really large margin of error. You don't have that on another on another one. There we go. Five prerequisites: strong giant and calf swing, reasonable shoulder flexibility. I had a gymnast just in Boston. She went to Auburn. Um, she had horrible shoulder flexibility, but a really nice tachyon. So I don't. You know, she made up for it by having a really strong calf. Um, reasonable straddle flexibility, strong shoulders. You need to have pretty good air awareness. I think the Kachev is the scariest one because it moves over the bar. Okay. Other until a girl does Kovacs. Um, I have to tell you a story. <laughs> All right. So when we have kids do Kachevs, we want to protect our athletes. We want to put like heel pads on them, you know, so the kids go to the sporting goods store and they buy knee pads and they put them on their heels. I had this coach call me up. He's like, Tony, I've got this girl working a Kovac. Can you come in and take a look? I was real excited. I was like, yeah, I, I'd be happy to take a look. I have not coached, have not taught anybody a Kovax, and I never did one as a, as a gymnast, you know, but I'll, I'll take a look. Said, well, you're a bar, good bar technician. Just come down and take a look. So I go into his gym. I call him up. I said, I'm about 45 minutes away. So I show up at his gym. Now the kids come over to me, and they're just coming off of bars. Okay? I see kids with heel pads on and stuff. This kid has a helmet on. <laughs> this should have been my first warning. Okay? This helmet wasn't in particularly good shape. There were cracks in it. There were dents in the metal. He didn't even have a loose foam pit. He had a red pit that was above ground, so he had his single rail up on a platform over this. So this kid was doing this thing like 14. Oh like, like, I'm not kidding. You're like, like, the bar is like seven and a half feet, and it's on top of a mat that we're on top of a platform that's about three feet up. So that's ten. So she's going over the bar. She's like 14 feet up. So she cranks up this giant and goes over the bar and goes, bam, and wails her head and then falls into the resi pit. And I'm so stunned that I don't say a thing. I just kind of step back like this. Now, as a coach, I try to be very patient. And, and like, you can't really get a feeling if that this is just one, you know. So I watch, and I watch her do a second one, okay? And she does the same thing, and she comes off, and her, like, eyes look through the ear hole, and, and this thing is just a mess. And, and, and I'm like, can you see the bar? You know, I'm looking, I'm like, can you see the bar? She goes, no, no, the helmet gets in the way. You want to take it off? No! <laughs> No, we're good. So I asked this guy, I'm like, Doug, what the hell are you thinking? Why do you think that this kid is a candidate for a Kovac? And he goes, well, she kept pulling in on her flyaway. Okay. What should I teach her? Straddle back. Right. So protect your athletes. But if I come in your gym and you've got a kid wearing a freaking helmet, we got to talk. Okay? Should not have happened. So you must have good air awareness. I, I wish that wasn't a true story. That's, progressions that I teach, that I teach giant hop. Okay? So as they do their giant over top of the bar, they release and recatch. Giant, release, and recatch. I think I have a video of a kid going giant, release, and not recatching. Um, timer swings on strap bar. Back extension roll the bridge, back extension roll. Sit up to straddle, timer swing on single rail, back off the bridge on a couple checks. Nothing new. Nothing new. Probably the only thing that people haven't done a lot of is this, is the giant pop. But it's that place at the top, that place of inertia, that giant pop, okay? that's where the release move is done. So if your kid can giant and even get her hands a millimeter off of the bar coming over the top, 
She knows the timing of this skill. She knows where it's going to get done. We use it to do it through rate, too. No, she. You, Professor Connor, did it too. Okay. Backdrop to stomach drop on trampoline, whether they do it like a kaboom or they just do a regular backdrop. Straddle sit up, roll catch low bar, just I'm sorry, I have a drill for that, or a video for that. Backdrop, reverse act over tumble trap bar, toe front dismount, we talked about how that's the same. Spotted reverse acting a pike over the bar. Okay? Why would we do it in a pike first? They don't kick you. That is the most important thing. Okay? If they're doing it with their feet together, they won't kick you. You won't. Okay? Also, the action of straddling shortens the body so the body will rotate faster. Too many kids straddle too early, and that's when you see the concept that sometimes falls away. So you want to get up, it starts with the feet together, and then straddle sit up. So I try to teach it starting off with a straight body. Uh, just timer swings. Look for a strong tap to the bottom. She should tap harder. That's the like she's obvious. She obviously does not to cut you. <laughs> Please get it fair with that. Strong leg. Back to the old sit up, set up the bridge. Now I'll have her sit up. Probably should put a screen there for this. <laughs> Doing the same drill but up a wedge mat so the feet have to reach higher instead of driving all the way down to the I like it on the wedge mat better. I think it, it is more realistic. I'll put that down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, tumble track bar. Uh, oh, so she's doing it in a pipe. And actually going to ask you about that. Um, most of the time I see girls working those and they're throwing those for the first time it's on a trench bar. And I mean, I don't have a trench bar, so is there any good substitute that I can come up with or just more drills and getting them comfortable with it? Getting them comfortable, I mean, in the end, you're going to, the first one, you're going to need to be standing up on something where the bar is pretty high on you anyway. Um, I, I, Taught them each way, and I don't think it particularly matters. I mean, having the trench bar has saved, you know, it has made it easier. But I, I would, if I didn't have a trench, I, I would just carry her up and over and dump her, you know, just into loose foam or onto somebody throwing in a mat. So she's coming up and over, and she's not doing the setup. We're just practicing the release part of it. Right. Okay. And I would just bring her, bring her over now. Until she was comfortable enough, where she was sitting up, and I was just kind of popping and doing the matrix stuff out of the way. Kind of thing. Um, I like this drill for for Jaegers, for toe shoots, to high bar. Um, okay. All she's doing is she's on a trapezoid and she's just rolling and sitting up, catching the bar. She missed and rolled right on. But also, she's traveling, sitting up, and catching the bar. And that's that catch thing that sometimes we forget. I have a great deal for Jaeger in the wrong place. I'm really sorry about that. Yeah. It's a pretty strong tap. And you can see what I'd like to next. You can see when she releases her feet are together. To do a bad release of feet and tightness. So you can see when she releases her feet are together and the straddle sit up, she gets this through. Just a different angle of that drill, better. I thought it would be a good thing to use for this better. Right. 
This is another drill. I like this drill because they're able to roll over the ball and it gets them to roll their hips behind them. Um, you might want them to stay in control and not say when we get off the video. Obviously, it wasn't like the first one. I'm like, okay, I'm going to video it. And she decided to go really hard and she ate it. Any questions on the cut show? You don't have an exercise ball in there. Or whatever. Yeah, I like the exercise ball because it really makes them get their, get their core engaged. Okay. You can't be lazy. This video is on YouTube. Of course it's on YouTube. I don't put, I don't put the good stuff on there. Moving on to Ginger. The requisites strong cap swing to lay out flyaway. Not just from a cast or a giant. I need to see the kids cap. And that is They need that. This is the kid that should have a floaty flyaway. They need to cast and stand the flyaway, and they need to have a strong layout shape. Again, you do giant hops. Cast and stand the layout flyaway to the back. Spotted layout flyaway to stand on the bar. And you do for your littler kid. Again, if they're not close enough to hit the bar with their feet, they're not close enough to catch the bar with their hands. So I like them to do a flyaway to stand on the bar. Um, they should not be wearing a helmet, they're not wearing a okay. A gainer pike or layout off of, tum off of the tumble track or the mini train. Okay. So they'll just get gainer off the end into the pit and then they'll do gainer quarter. And try to reach back and hit the edge of the tumble track. I don't think I have a video, but can you guys picture what I mean on that? Okay. Uh, gainer, uh, a tap for gainer in a strap bar. Again, like the overshoot, a good gainer is only a quarter turn. That they'll quarter turn, I'm a lefty, so I'll be coming here, I'll be lefty, and then as I reach back, my body will finish. If they try to do a half, when they reach back, all of a sudden they're here. Right? And that again is where you're going to see the legs apart. Lay out quarter to back turn on train to lean, lay out the stomach, okay, jump speed, I have videos of that. Lay out half the stomach on trains. So they're learning how to fall. Learning what it feels like, they're going to go lay out half, stomach drop, to stomach drop. Spotted flyaway quarter drill off of tumble track, and I don't know if I have that, I'll have to show it. Uh, and then we'll do trench bar. On this, this is the difference. It's a bunch easier to teach a ginger on a trench bar. So even if you don't have a trench bar, if you can stack the mats on one side, because you really only kind of need one side for a ginger, that is, is what I do. That's how I taught it the first time. Then I got my trench bar and I just teach it up there. Um, I don't have to use the mat so much. Because before it was, hey, my lefty ginger has come over today, my righty ginger tomorrow, because I was using every block and mat in the gym to get up high and not bottom up. Blind slide. So lay out the stomach. What I'm looking for is that at quarter turn, she's straight up and down. And then she reaches out for the next quarter, and that's what brings it to her stomach. So it's not a half turn quarter. Um, the next video is doing it on the trench bar, uh, but you can do this on one side. It doesn't have to be one out, quarter turn. I just kind of fix her arm. She's 
Jobs and she, she was the perfect candidate. She was at this point. She grew a lot and ended up learning so many things that. Uh, but you know, she just did this really high quality lab. So we would go. Um, we would just go. If this was my trench part here, okay, she would just go lay out to stand on one side. So I would just, if I had my mat set up, we would lay out and we just stand. And we would do that for a while. And then she'd go lay out. And just before she was going to stand, she'd quarter turn. But we do a lot of labs to stand. Because you want it going up that high. You don't want one of those, you know, pick the right skill. If this is a kid that had a great double layout, she's probably not a good candidate for a game. You know, most kids double layout tend to be a little pain. Mm. Couple different fingers. She needed to get her chest more round. But you can see the quarter in that as she reaches back. Questions on fingers? When you get the quarter cord, really, is she pushing towards you? Or away? Um, where I'm spotting? Yeah. Away from me? Yeah. I, 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 I just prefer that way. I've, I've got a good buddy. No, I like to go towards And I'm just like, no. I, it's just kind of how I was taught to spot. So I, I, I don't think it matters. I think I stay out of the way. I'm much likely to get punched if they're turning away from me. I was telling them, if you hit me, we're probably both getting hurt. Jaeger, <laughs> um, probably the hardest release move because it does require you to flip all the way around before you see the ball. It has to be a full rotation before you can see it. So this is why it's very important. My most visual kids tend to be the ones who can hit it. Because you, you have to see the bar as you release to know where it is at the end. It's good for front tumblers and most visual gymnasts. I didn't get my um, Strong front giant. Good, they must have good swing to front layout and a blind change to front layout. You know, if your kid can't blind change, come on. Don't, don't teach your kid here. Progression swing to front layout. Why change the front giant hop out? So, and I, I have that on video, and you can see that. Correct tap swing and strap bar, back drop front and straddle through on trampoline, gain or front on tumble track. Uh, teaching them how to fall, just going off the end of a beam. Kind of do like Shushinova to their stuff. Just so she knows what it's going to feel like to fall. Because she was afraid of fall. She was like, she would either catch or she would do something. Oldest plastic in the air, and she's big as me, and I would make her. This is a hop out, and we'll do it from a couple angles. Um, again, like the back giant hop out, that, that's where the release move is done. That hop right there is where the flip is done. Uh, whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. You can kind of see it on here. Better angle. That's that hop out part is where the flip is done. She had some body position issues that you can see on there. I, I just know where I know she needs to be more round on the way down. Front giant swing on strap bar. Uh, we'll do here. Uh, go to the stomach. And there's a flip. Of Building, they can start doing. As she got better, she would start really kicking her heels and being able to hit her hands on the edge of the tumble track. And she'll go back drop front, straddle sit up through. Sit up, straddle through. Kind of mimic the bigger. Now, here's one. Um, she again was a kid that wasn't seeing the bar at the end, right? It creates some stuff. So on the bounce handstand trainer, I kind of made like a set of parallel. Two bar block low. She would drive and sit up and reach through. And then I did it from the side. You can see I felt like a little French fry at the end to give her something to catch. Let's do 
another drill for us. Um, uh, this is on book. This is pretty nice. Jaeger's a really strong cap. So if you want to get your twice a cap to the box, you can see a big kick. And that's what you want to have. This one's a little bit smaller, but she's still pretty solid. This one's a little pinny. Uh, you know, she, she drives, she rolls her shoulders down so much. Questions on, on Jiggers? We move on to Delta. This is sort of a combination between a Jigger and a Jigger. Um, so basically, just taking both those drills and combining them. We've got strong swing half turns in a row. So our, our lead up drill, we go swing half turn, swing half turn, swing half, sit up front pipe. So over the fence, swing half, swing half, swing half, and she would let go, front pipe. Okay. Lay off three quarter on tramp, roll over, um, oh, here's a new crash. <laughs> We'll play it through the end, I'm sorry, but Jeffy does a decent thing uh, Delta in it. Um, you know, when they do stuff like that, what do you do? You know, spray some water on it, rub some chalk in it, throw it in. Okay. Yeah, I made her clean her skin off the bar before she came in. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Spray some water on it, now we'll get going. <laughs> fresh, fresh water. <laughs> <laughs> like we're gonna, you know, spread it. Not green alcohol. So this is actually a good one. She's just supposed to go full parallel, but now she put her brain together. You can see this clear. So Down off the bar very gingerly. But here's the drill that we did with that. So just roll over, sit up. I like doing it on the stall bars because it gives her something to catch. Uh, no really time. Oh, she's learning. I'm just showing some videos again. I've got some other stuff I want to get to. I fell into the train. <laughs> <laughs> stuff we do for uh, Shaposhes, and again, starting on the arms, do they have a decent clear head or a can? I'll just bring them over and drop them onto their back. Up whether you're doing it onto the knees of the pit or um, you can just go on the mat, just over and then dumping it over by themselves. And now she's actually trying to learn a uh, array. So she'll sit up a little bit more. This is one of those rare occasions where this is the first one she ever caught me on that video. So it got really bad, which is why I, I, I like this. It's a good, it's a good skill for her. Does anybody have any questions on it? I think I'm done. I am right on time, too. The first one I've ended on time. Um, so with all your release moves, set the base early. 
explain to the kids why they're doing certain drills and where they're leading to, because it'll definitely help their motivation. Um, if you have my email, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.